Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, wanna say welcome to it. We are back for our next installment of Everyday Lessons Now. Your Shuli Jiger, well, Terran Jiger calendar, and my co host, none other than the greatest on planet Earth, Dr. Amala Luncheon. She's here every week, always early, never late. Wanna say welcome to it? <laughs> happy to be here happy to be here how are you doing i'm good i'm good i'm good um you had a nice show last week got a lot of feedback on the yeah planning and and, and preparing and, yeah, and decision, decision making. making and all of that right, everybody right. was like they they appreciate the knowledge and the little advice so when planning to write things down is very important and you do that mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we just want to come here every week as i said to encourage everyone and just kind of bring some different perspective and if mm-hmm. you have feedback you can always hit us up all the information is always right there. You see them always popping yep. up. So you just look for it. Send us an email. Um, go on social media. Follow all our handles. Myself, Dr. Amala, or Everyday Lessons. Now you can go there and send anything you want to send. Your comments, your Absolutely. feedback. We appreciate all the feedback and all the comments. So, yes, we do. Today, what are we talking about today? Today, I wanted to talk about media and gender roles. The, the, the role that the media plays in helping to shape our society and how we interact with others how we learn what we should do and shouldn't do um based on on the media's portrayal of men and women um so that's kind of what i wanted to talk about because it it is important and um you being a media practitioner i'm not trying to rest a crown on your head but you know heavy is the head that wears the crown so you know it's one of those things where you kind of have to as you like to say, bubble in a space of whatever, you know. <laughs> so um, that's that's where I, I saw the topic, and I because I, I went through, you know, looking for what are some things that we can talk about, and I saw media and gender roles. I'm like, yes, of course we can. So one of the things that I saw recently, um, and you saw it as well, was the Tinder Swizzle on on Netflix. Tinder Swizzle or Tinder Swizzler? Swindler. Swindler, yeah. yeah, Tinder swindler, Tinder whatever. I'm yeah. still, Tinder, I'm still, um, I'm yeah, still swindled by the entire like thing. Yeah, very, very triggered. Yes. Um, however, we have to start with the fact that that's a true story. So you know, it, it is a documentary. Um, but what it does show for me, or, or what what stood out to me, was how women were making decisions based on emotion. Each of those women saw red flags. Each of those women had something in their head saying, but you know, what if, or, you know, I know I'm doing this, but, Mm -hmm. and they didn't stop. They went through, you know? So that for me, many times I wanted to reach my screen and just be like, no, stop. What are you doing? Um, But, you know, it, it showed that. And it also showed the guy being very calculating. And so for me, it puts men in a space of, not being able to think using emotions, um, but everything just being so rigid and so, you know, calculating. And that, you know, is, is a role that I'm not sure that we want men to undertake. So at the end of it, I'm not sure that it gave the option to viewers that like, look, listen, what happened here was incorrect and, you know, so on. none of that was said. It was just a documentary. So, yeah. you know, make of it what you will. And it was a documentary based on the experiences of the woman. Yes. And how they they felt and they basically expressed their feelings afterwards and the fact that they got duped plain talk bad manners into something that wasn't real. Mm-hmm. And not trying to be cynical or uh, play devil's advocate, but they had a responsibility for themselves mm-hmm. to make like better said, to they, make better they decisions. Saw these red flags. Yeah, to make better decisions. One of the things like I always make the like how you said at the top, I always say um, bubble in a space I like to bubble in a space and bat increase right. meaning um, maybe it's my thinking and it might not be good all the time to think the way I do but I would have said if I had a girlfriend who reached out to me and be like hey I'm dating this guy and started expressing me all the things that the guy is doing mm-hmm. I would have automatically started to ask different questions like for instance right. the women he chose were quote unquote regular women that's the ones he took money from the mm-hmm. ones he entertained were the model type women so mm-hmm, what he did mm-hmm. like for the second girl the second girl what was interesting is how he didn't have a relationship with her but was still able to get money from her 
because she was looking for something. So in terms of her emotional fulfillment, he was someone that she could talk to. Right. And even though she knew in the beginning she was friend zoned, she said, well, you know, I felt responsible because this is my friend and I right. didn't want anything but to happen But friend zoned in a place of being part of a clique. She was friend zoned, yes. but she was yeah, friend zoned yeah, yeah. from she, this guy who looks and appears to be this double dead, this the exactly. um who dates yep. who dates Russian models and mm-hmm. he wants little old me to go on trips with them. Mm-hmm. Right. Like little old right. me is included in the party. Exactly. I am part I'm his friend. I am like that friend because he made her believe you are my one true friend. I date mm-hmm. these girls, I live this fabulous lifestyle, but mm-hmm. I how can I go to the Maldives? How can I go to Brussels you. and not call you to come fly private and have a good time with me? So right. she felt so he knew yeah, exactly what, as you said, he was calculated as to what he was doing. He knew exactly mm-hmm. what he was doing. But mm-hmm. it's so sad that we now live in a time where, I, for me looking at it, I would automatically tell myself, you're not interested in me. Look at the photographs alone, the women he went at. Look at how they, look at how he, look at what he project in terms of his mm-hmm. social media. And because mm-hmm. remember, we are talking in a no time. This is a guy who started doing this back in 2010 coming up. He right. got really, really high end when he got to like mm-hmm. 2016, when mm-hmm. he started to really dupe people into money. But yes. as Dr. Mahler said, it's real. He's out. He's no longer in prison. And yeah. they never arrested him for the crimes of the women. He got arrested for fraud mm-hmm. and um, wrong ID and that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. still five months. Still five mm-hmm. months in jail. And these women are still paying bank loans to this day. You're right, For exactly. Money, he in one up. case, one girl had taken nine loans, so she had nine sets of people calling her, mm-hmm. you know. And you need to ask yourself, at what point is it enough? And at what point is it too much, you know? So how do we look at what the media portrays to us? Um, what do we take from it? And similarly, I mean, shows like The Bachelor, um, the, the Bachelorette, uh, Joe Millionaire, you look at how people make decisions on those shows, you know, and and what people people often come off the shows and say, oh well, you know, they didn't show the part where I was talking about whatever, and they just made me seem shallow. Okay, that's so what the show is the about. So the media has a responsibility, you know, but also we don't want to get to a stage where the media is the watchdog, and so they filter so much that you know you're not able to get something good out of it so i would watch those shows that i just mentioned because i'm interested in emotion and i'm interested in how people make decisions what are the things that are important to young people and i watch it because those are the the people who are influencing the people that come into the workforce so i need to know how people i am managing or leading are looking at life you know and if we have people who are going to look at joe millionaire and in in joe millionaire i don't know if you know the premise of the show but joe millionaire there's one rich guy and one guy who's not rich um they both these two guys now actually both work regular jobs the women don't know who is whom and so they go on dates with each of them and they're trying to figure out well you know if he was rich probably he wouldn't do that oh he's so cultured oh he speaks this way and what and people look at really frivolous and surface ways of trying to figure out if somebody has money correct you know and but they're really trying to get to the one who's the millionaire so character be damned you know nobody cares if somebody and this and this and this is the thing they were in the going back to the swindler he Mm -hmm. projected that he had a lot of money right remember when he had he and he had all his things set up where when you google him his name comes up as yes. a, a son of a tycoon a billionaire tycoon yeah, a son of a, a, a diamond a diamond trader or something. yeah and so yeah. you as the woman are thinking that there is and then too is that little piece of a fairy tale in there as well the fairy tale right. of you, you are this damsel in distress and this this super rich guy likes me and mm. then he had all remember he covered all his bases he had like a yes. full team working with him so it wasn't yes. him alone so he right. had security guards he had maids yeah. he had everybody was in on the scheme and mm. lived the life and mm. people don't understand this because so, one of the things that you would have seen if you look at the movies when he gave her the watch only to realize that he the, it wasn't a party he had an adama and mm-hmm. it was false and mm-hmm. it shows you how easy it is he he what we call it in 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 our world we call it he's a mix matchy meaning you wear like you wear a balenciaga shoe but you mm-hmm. wear a plain white t-shirt okay or you right. wear a gucci sweater and you mm-hmm. wear uh air force ones 
So you okay. mix matchy to to sell the persona of having. Right, right. A lot of people mm-hmm. do it. We see it in the rap world and the hip hop world. Okay. There are few people who live, but the people who actually live complete lives are the ones that are not flashy. Because you can see somebody exactly. who yeah. wears a patted Philip and might have on fifty thousand dollars worth of clothes in terms of trousers pan because they can afford mm-hmm. to go to a a, a, a boutique. Where and the boutique and the boutique will close down for the day and they will shop yeah. and they will say okay mr whoever and they will outfit yeah. him in his mind okay yes it's a party philip i paid upwards of four hundred thousand for the watch but it's a watch mm-hmm. in his mind mm-hmm. or yeah. i'm wearing uh louis vuitton loafers it's loafers they don't mm-hmm. put brand next to the the item Right. But when you don't have money, you put brand next to the item. Next to everything. So what he did was brand certain things to give the personas though he has a lot of money. So mm-hmm. he'd be an Because he knows what people are looking exactly. for. Exactly. And he yeah. played into that. And that is why right. these girls were drawn in. And they were drawn into the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Because they went on. A, I remember the first story she spoke about how she could not get over being on this jet. And what mm-hmm. she didn't cater for is how he allowed her to be so free with her phone. She was allowed to record, to tape. He was showing everybody a good time because right. he was he was city jetting. He, he this, buying you in. He buying you in, and that's what he did. And you have to remember, he he didn't. This is not a guy who's operating just in the U.S. or just right. in England. He exactly. was going yeah. from Amsterdam to Brussels yeah. to yeah. here to, to London, there to London. Yeah. So come on, it's a whole different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And the things he would do, he will. Because he burned a lot of money to keep the to yes. keep the because keep the, persona the persona he had five thousand and seven thousand hotel suite a night mm-hmm. he stayed there for a week so he mm-hmm. burned unnecessary money but it was necessary for the persona yes. it's like it's like and, anything and you have to pay also, to make so he spent yeah, a lot of money yeah. to keep the to keep the, the the rig up the image going and we also have to remember that the, those were the people that they talked to obviously there were other people who would not have come on camera to I'm help sure. support this thing as well I am you know? sure that was for, his the f- job, for really. different reasons that was his job yeah. and they wouldn't come to one yeah. family embarrassment yeah, um, of and, and some you, you would be embarrassed and some of them might have been because there was one couple who spoke about who, they weren't on camera but they spoke that he worked for them in his early days where he was he used mm-hmm. to be a housekeeper mm-hmm. he used to take care of mm-hmm. their kid walk mm-hmm. their dog and that kind of thing and he stole yeah. from them because that's when he now started to steal he was doing check fraud that's how he right. started you understand yes. So the media has a role, yes, and we have to be careful of how you interpret it, what they're selling. You have to understand. Like we always say understanding the assignment and knowing yourself and being self-aware. You have to understand that everybody has a job. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a job. The media has one, you have one. Your job is to you. So you have to ask the right questions. You can't allow yourself to be drawn into a situation without asking the relevant questions. And I'm sure this woman did because, and he had answers. He had answers. Of you have to respect the fact that rehearsed. his scheme was a great Ponzi scheme. It was. Like the many, many before him. Right? And it's not like you didn't get anything out of it though. So so my thing is, if your emotional needs are being met, then you may do some things that you could regret later. Yeah. You know? Because you feel, these women felt like they were heard. They felt like, you know, he was listening to them. And, and whatever little snippets he was sending, like these five second things... Because, I mean, it wasn't like long conversations or whatever. He was just, oh, thinking about you tonight. And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. You know, and that was enough for them to feel like, okay, someone cares about me. So we go back now to talking about self-awareness and stuff like that. Um, and understanding, yes, the media has a job to do, but you too need to filter. Because right now what we have is a lot more community access the stuff that the media shows before it wasn't so widely accessible so i wouldn't know immediately what's happening in let's say lisbon or france or wherever but now if you tell me something now i can go online and pull it up and you know yes it's happening and i could be influenced by it and the media decides what they want to show to me and how they portray people so we have instances where you would see like men are not necessarily shown as caregivers in many situations, you know? And so men don't feel like it's a part of their role to be that person. Um, You would find women aren't always shown in positions of authority in the workplace. And so women walk into a workplace thinking that they have to be in a subservient position. Mm -hmm. That is what the media shows you, you know? But this community access shows, you know, what, what exists but then you have to think of well, what is important. Is it important to me to want to shatter that glass ceiling 
is it even possible? How would I go about it? You know, and you can defy some of the things that you see in the media. You could be that one person who wants to do something that, you know, whatever story you're looking at says should not be done. But you also could take guidance um, and not necessarily be stuck on what they're showing or how they're portraying a certain class of people, how they're portraying men or women or black people or Hispanic people or whatever. You don't necessarily have to be stuck on that, but be aware of it and then look at how you could move forward from there, you know? Correct. So that I think is, is important and not get stuck on, because sometimes we get so stuck on details that we miss the big picture. You yeah, know, and, we and, haven't. Mm-hmm. And not only that too, and because of all these things, social media, we 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 we, we don't enjoy the moment too. A lot of people right. go out you now, like we make jokes that like people go out and the first thing they do, they take photographs. Take we all do it. We are yeah. all all guilty of going to a restaurant and you want to capture the moment of the food before you touch your plate. That yeah. time you're hungry as hell, you know, you want to eat so bad, but you cannot mm-hmm. eat yet until you capture the moment of this beautiful meal you're about to take part in. It's cool, yeah. but sometimes we have to remember to just enjoy the moment. Be present. And be yeah. present in the moment. And you can see, like, I am happy that there are things that I've experienced. I don't have them documented in the now time, mm-hmm. like the photographs and the big reels, but I have seen beautiful things in my lifetime. And, mm-hmm. but I know I did it. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it puts a smile on my face and the memory is there and the memory is there inside of me yeah. you understand yeah. that I know it's okay I experienced that I experienced mm-hmm. that and that was a great feeling at the time you mm-hmm. understand so mm-hmm. you have to mm-hmm. try sometimes to don't get caught up but no it's easy to say and we try to but you have to make and there are little tools to do it you know, and we, we fight and we knock social media and all these apps and all of these um, big tech companies but if you read their fine print and their bylaws they cover themselves well you know of course so oh, there are little sure. things like like I have a tool I use for social media called Screen Time. They all come with it. All phones come with it. All apps come with it. Where you can program the app to be on it for mm-hmm. a certain time. You are the okay. responsible one. You right. have to responsibly be responsible for your time. So when yes. your screen thing pops up, you're like, oh, good idea. It reminds you you've been on that app I for spent long. Two hours exactly. You understand? Yeah. You've spent two and a half hours in the app to pull back. So they mm-hmm. give you the tools. We mm-hmm. as human beings need to use the tools. Mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. then complain but use the tools and use it wisely because all of these things if managed properly could really help us because mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie I love Siri I love the the, the setting of an, uh, a meeting or the setting of a, uh, a reminder it is mm-hmm. really really useful but Absolutely. we have to mm-hmm. use them wisely wisely you understand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's what it is Agreed. so Agreed. when we talk in media and the role media has to play and gender and all of these things yes we know sometimes and now yes we know we know that we can say how much is really the world is really governed and driven by men the most powerful people in the world are men and it, the, the what we need to do is kind of change and learn how they think and how they look at women once we mm-hmm. can get the powerful men to start looking at women differently, everything will change. And you see, we have the operator, we've been operating in a space where a lot of men feel that they can get away with it because they're a man with money. Right, exactly. Yes, yes. You understand? We have to stop thinking like that and start thinking that, okay, I am not going to do that because I'm a man. I'm going to do that because it's the I'm right thing to do. Exactly. And it's the right and, thing and to do. Need to be, but, but we could also try to be inclusive and try to be um try to work from a space of collaboration i mean i talk about that all the time because it's my favorite way to work i think you get further when you collaborate um and so that is one way to look at it you know having having these collaborations and and you you really don't see it when you look on this look at the screen because most times it's one gender against another one gender being above another like you said you know so and they only do it for aesthetics like if you watch news news anchors are always man and woman because it's for aesthetics it's to appear Mm -hmm. as do but Mm -hmm. if two powerful men or if two men or two great women could anchor a show why not right why don't put two women to lead a show if the both of them are great Right. You, they, we we have this thing in media where we must put a woman, and I know we say Nano and somebody, again, but you was look at you was both of you all as man and woman. Wait till you talk. I know somebody in the comments is going to be putting however, that. However, however, it's a case of great collaboration because Correct. I'm a doctor and you're not. You're a media practitioner and I am not. So Correct so is right, and it's about bouncing back, works. and that's where the yin and yang comes. Deliberate, exactly. And that is yes. how you get. Yes balance but we're talking exactly. in a space where it's not yin and yang it's just placed there for the aesthetic exactly. purpose that is yes. what we try mm-hmm. to unlearn mm-hmm. that kind of way of thinking 
and mm. do it for the right reason. This collaborated effort is one that, like I call, I I always say, I make jokes all the time for people who've heard me on other platforms. I always mm. refer to Dr. Amal as my guru. Why mm. I say and make jokes because over the past year, I have been placed in a position I never thought I'd have been put in. And that's mm-hmm. because of her encouragement and good words and help, which is very mm-hmm. important. We also have to understand helping is free. It doesn't come right. at a cost. You understand? Sometimes, yes, helping somebody financially might be in a tangible way, yes, but sometimes mm-hmm. you can help someone with the things you say or guiding them in a way or, or encouraging them to do something course. which costs absolutely course. nothing. So all that is what we have to think about. So mm-hmm. once again, in a snap of a yep. finger, we are the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Snap of the finger, we are the end. And in fine style, this is how we close. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, until next time, we go on. <laughs>